this video, we go to the Mesquite Flat Sand Dunes in Death Valley National Park. Sand dunes are an amazing way to learn about composition and light. We are going to talk about things to look for and how using a long lens is a great way to bring out the textures and shapes of these amazing landscapes. Alright guys, and this video is all about sand dunes. We're here in Death Valley National Park at the Mesquite Flat Sand Dunes, which is the, the most famous sand dunes. Uh, we started walking out and we're really, really far away from the main dunes. Uh, we found a different way to get in and we kind of walked out in the middle of a place where there's no footprints or anything like that because that does get heavily trafficked, the uh, main area over there. So right now, uh, Chris is already actually setting up for a shot here. Uh, we want to show you guys what we look for because sand dunes can be really chaotic. Um, they can be really hard to photograph if you're, you know, there's just stuff everywhere. And so we're going to kind of show you guys a few tips on how to photograph dunes. All right, guys, so the first tip I want to give you is look for patterns. Uh, the wind causes a lot of beautiful patterns in these sand dunes. Really concentrate on the little things first. I mean, that's a huge deal. You know, you got a lot of big landscapes out here and a lot of beautiful areas. But one great thing about sand dunes is you don't have to use the sky. It could be, it's almost a completely blue sky right now. And I found a shot here. It is still a good, I'd say almost two hours until sunset. And I'm already taking shots because the shadows are absolutely brilliant here. So what I'm doing is I found a, like a big bank of just these beautiful kind of wavy patterns in the sand. And I'm just taking a shot. It's really abstract and the way I've set up my composition here is I'm actually doing a landscape orientation. The reason why I'm doing landscape and not portrait is because all the lines are all vertical lines. They're all leading vertically and I think it looks so much better that I have a, a, a landscape orientation that's you know horizontal and not vertical because the lines are already going vertical. It's kind of like photographing straight trees. Uh, I think to me, my eye, it looks a lot better when you got a bunch of vertical lines, but then you have a, a landscape orientation. It's uh, one thing to kind of keep in mind that you can do that I think I'm going to like. And I also think what I'm probably going to do is do a little bit of a panel here. So I'm going to take some shots, maybe five or six shots and do like a panorama of the same thing. So just a long panorama of vertical lines. I think that might look really nice. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And uh, yeah, I got already knocking out my first shot. It's still two hours to sunset, so it's really nice. So the sand dunes here, uh, sand dunes can be very hard to photograph because it's very overwhelming. Um, you have to think in smaller frames. So sometimes what me helps is just walking around with that, uh, you know, as goofy as it sounds, but making that little um, frame with your hands and, and looking through that and then find out if, you're, if you find something that you like. And uh, so far, I found some patterns in the sand that looks like zebra stripes. And uh, I walked a little bit further, um, just literally over the next dune, tried to also walk in the harder sand and not in the soft sand, uh, just not to leave too many, too many footprints out here and uh, not to ruin uh, future compositions for me or for other photographers that might come here. Yeah, so here I found another shape in the sand and it almost looks like um, also the, the, you know, the shape or pattern on a zebra skin um, or fur. And uh, yeah, let's see what I, I hope I can do some dodging and burning and bring out the dark parts of the photo and, and make it look even more like a zebra. Okay, I think this will be safari day today. <laughs> I just found uh, little tracks of uh, probably a little bug or something. Mike said it's probably a centipede. I hope it's not because I don't like them. <laughs> so in my imagination, it's a little cute bug. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it just goes some nice little tracks, like up and down, like a little racetrack. And uh, I think it stands out very nice uh, against the sand pattern in, uh, you know, in, the, in the background. And um, then also what I wanted to talk about here is when I'm 
Changing lenses. Right now it's a little bit breezy, it's not too bad. So what I do if I want to change lenses is I don't put my backpack on, on, the, on, you know, on the ground. So I have my backpack up here and I kind of wear it the other way around. And then I can change the lenses like almost half inside the bag. If it's um, more windy than it is right now, I will not change lenses. Then I will just stick with, you know, make my decision and then stick with that lens. There you have it guys, it was a cute little bug, it was not a centipede. So another tip I want to give you guys is using the long lens. The long lens is your best friend out here with dunes. Uh, I find a lot of times when you're using a wide angle lens and you're trying to capture a bunch of the dunes, uh, what happens is it flattens everything out and you lose a lot of the scale of it. With a long lens, you can pick out details. You can, you get that compression effect where you get the background and the foreground, you know, that appears closer together and uh, you can really utilize shapes and colors and the light. Uh, it really opens up a lot of possibilities with the long lens. So I'm gonna take a couple of shots. I have one right now where I have a lot of layers uh, of these dunes going out in the distance. And what it's doing is uh, the long lens giving that compression effect and kind of squishing all those layers together. You got this really nice golden color in the sand right now because of where the sun is. And so I think I'm gonna move on after I get this shot and see if I can find something else. But this is really amazing. Like I said, the long lens is gonna be your best friend when it comes to dunes. watching the light there's a lot of light and shadow and if you take away everything around it just look at what the light and the shadow is doing you get some really cool shapes and I'm just taking it handheld with my long lens because to be honest with you my long lens I have a hard time seeing something uh, that would look good with a long lens so I actually have to physically put on my long lens and look through it and just kind of look around and uh, just right through the viewfinder and that way I can kind of see what things look like with that compression uh, effect and a lot of times I end up just finding something and I'll uh, handheld. I don't mind if I just have to ratchet up the ISO a little bit or open up the aperture a little bit. But uh, if I end up having to just shoot it handheld, which I normally don't do, I prefer to use a tripod. But with something like this where the light's constantly changing, that sun's getting ready to set right now over the, the mountains back there. So all this light's going to be gone here in probably about 10 or 15 minutes. So what I'm trying to do is just handhold everything, uh, bump up that shutter speed to like 1 640th of a second. Uh, my ISO is going to be probably up higher a little bit, maybe 250, which isn't high at all, but higher than the base ISO of 64, whatever I need to do to get it properly exposed, but also just get my shot. It's a little more run and gun style than a deliberate setup on the tripod but I find that I find more compositions that way with a long lens because I'm not very good at seeing it with my eyes. <laughs> 